and welcome to the Creating, Living and Making podcast. I'm your host, Adam Mackey, and joining me in the red corner, weighing at 160 pounds, is the Grant Alexander. Wow, I lost a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> I thought and you were going with me. I was like, in yeah, the blue right. corner, at 150 pounds, is Molly Kurt. Hello. That might, I don't know what I weigh anymore. <laughs> How are we doing, boys? <laughs> Pretty oh. good. Pretty, I'm feeling really light right now. <laughs> it's, about, it's about 60 well, pounds light. <laughs> I don't know what pounds is, so I didn't want to be... I've been watching Freedom, and Nick Jonas in that weighs 150 pounds, so I figured I'll just say 150, that way I can't offend anyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very nice. Anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got myself lost. What have you guys been doing this week? Uh, I guess I'll kick it off. So I got out of my two-week quarantine yesterday. Yay. Yes, it's it's very nice. Um, been doing a bunch of biking around the city, running some errands. Um, we're having beautiful fall weather here in Toronto, so it's uh, it's very nice to be out of the apartment. Um, that being said, got a Lots of stuff done while I was still in quarantine since the last time we talked. Um, put out the 3D printed honeycomb coasters video, um, which I was very happy with. It's getting really good reception. Um, lots of people telling me on Reddit that um, water and other liquids will fall through the hexagonal cutouts as if I didn't realize that. But that's just <laughs> the way Reddit is, as we know. <laughs> right. I, I look at your coasters and I go, it's better than a napkin which is yeah. like mm. the alternative but like yeah it's not going to be great if you're if you're like you know got this crazy condensation happening but if you have that much condensation happening you're not drinking fast enough there you go that's a good <laughs> drink way faster it. and and all you got to do is every time you have a cup of coffee is just move the coaster over one coaster and then by the end of it when you have all this coffee stains you'll have a nice little pattern yeah. <laughs> ah, it's just funny because like everyone who says it thinks they're the first person to have thought of it. And you get the same comment like 50 times. And it's just like... What a great segue for be... last week. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right? I just don't need to be thinking about this anymore. Like I'm on to the next project in my head anyway. Yeah. Um, but anyways, if you haven't seen that yet, uh, go check it out. It was a fun video. Um, I've done... In a past two 3D printing videos, I've showed the Fusion process, designing process. And in this one, I actually kind of talked about it, which I think came across pretty well. And I'm definitely going to interrupt yeah, like that more. Thank you. Yeah, going forward. Um, yeah. So very happy with that. I also have been working on these guys, which no one listening can see, but Grant and Adam can. So for the listeners, I'm holding so up good. some very swaggy embossed leather keychains so we are starting something new everyone anyone who supports us on patreon is getting one of these um, exclusive clamp embossed leather keychains um, we'll post up some pictures up uh, as this episode's come out so you can go check it out on the clamp instagram i'll probably post it on my instagram as well um, and on twitter Twitter everywhere. I'll, I'll even put it on Facebook, even though I've pretty much abandoned <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, but this is, uh, I've been kind of iterating through these. Grant and Adam have been helping me out, giving me feedback, but um, I'm very happy with where these are. So they are all numbered. Yes. They're exclusive. So on the back, um, we have a, a stamped numbering. So no two are the same. They're not limited edition. We're just going to keep it going kind of indefinitely. As long as people keep supporting us on Patreon, you will get one of these dope keychains. And it's it's numbered based on when you were a Patreon or a patron. Yes. Just so everyone's clear, you don't get to pick your own number. Yeah, we're not uh, doing the, the anarchistic exams <laughs> <laughs> and having coffee. Choose your favorite three digits in the world. <laughs> keeping it a little simpler this time. That was fun, but we're keeping it a little simpler this time. Yeah. Um, anyways, check it out. Um, I think there'll be a cool little thing to have floating around the world. I know so far we're going to have them on opposite ends of the world, which is kind of cool to think yeah. about right off the bat. 
That's mm. pretty cool. But yes, um, we'll talk more about Patreon at the end. But yes, that was fun. Been working on some belts as well. Um, but other than that, not too much else. Are you uh, still working on the the dancing gnome belt? Yes. Yeah. So that's yeah. the all the actually I should talk about that a little bit. So that is all kind of done decoration wise. I just have to put the buckle on and finish the edges. Um, I did end up embossing the letters like you talked about last week with the carving and it looks really, really nice. Um, so yeah. I found this really cool, intricate Celtic font um, that, yeah, it just looks fantastic embossed. I have, I posted some stories last week, but I mean, by the time this episode comes out, I'll have the beauty shots on uh, my Instagram. Cool. So yeah, very happy with that as well. And I'm doing, a, I'm working on just a much more minimalistic belt as well uh, for someone else, but not much to say about that. It's nice, but it's not as um, unique. Yeah, cool. So Grant, what about you? Well, so I have been doing a lot, but I'll only talk about a couple things uh, this week to try and keep it short. I've been working on uh, the Mystery Maker collaboration that was uh, put up by the makers on Zoom having coffee people. It was mainly uh, organized by Colt, uh, BCF Leather, and uh, I luckily was paired up with uh, Morley. Morley was the one who uh, who actually gave me his half-finished project or, or whatever, and uh, yeah, so I finished that project, and I will be uh, delivering it to him tomorrow and filming his reaction as well, which is just probably a surprise to him that what, that I'm, I'm going to be filming it, but whatever. Yeah, I kind of figured that was coming. <laughs> Hopefully, it's a good reaction because uh, Morley and I are going uh, canoe camping. Yes. That's the exciting thing that I've been prepping for. I've been making, uh, putting together a bunch of stuff. We're going to be doing some filming while we're there um, and doing some sort of collaborations. So stay tuned for that stuff. Uh, but it's going to be my first uh, canoe camping trip, and hopefully, we can get some good footage and. Oh yeah, the weather is supposed to be nice, and there's no way we're not going to get footage. It's going to be like perfect leaves, at least right. two really sunny days. Yeah, and like I just checked the the leaf, uh, the fall color colors report for Algonquin Park, and uh, they're saying it's in full red bloom for uh, maple trees. So autumn has struck Algonquin Park, and right at the perfect time for us to go there, and I am excited. Uh, and yeah, I've been doing a bunch of other stuff, but uh, those projects are seemingly never ending. So I'll talk about them another week. Okay. <laughs> How about you, so, Adam? Um, don't forget to turn the camera on this time. Yeah. yeah. If I see some animals. So luckily there's going to be two people. So if I miss all of the footage, hopefully Morley will catch it. So if you see I some see like moose stuff go up. <laughs> yeah, we if we get real close up close and personal with some moose in the park, I hope one of us will at least press the record button. Yeah, last time I was there, I saw three moose. So really, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic. Yeah. Oh, nice. I mean, I'm, I haven't seen a moose up close except for almost hitting one of them in my car. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, well. yeah. Um, I've been working on a new video which is the one that I modified my workbench. Um, I've had actually a bit of trouble with it because like I've never recorded with a camera before. So like um, actually having to change exposure settings and stuff and I forgot to do it for a couple of clips and the they were like straight on clean pine that had the sun directly on it so they're bright as hell. And yeah, and there's not really any way to fix it in post. Well, not that I'm capable of anyway. Um <laughs> So, like, I did a little disclaimer at the beginning just saying, like, you know, I got a new camera and that some of the clips are a bit, you know, a bit bright and rough, but, you know, let me get used to the camera sort of thing. I'm not too concerned because, like, really it's just – it's only cutting a couple of things. Like, it's not really that big of a video. Um, yeah. Which is uh, – yeah, so sort of just like a learning curve. And then um, I was challenged by my mate, so – a few weeks ago was Father's Day here. I don't know what it is over there. 
when it is over there. But um, my Jim. wife got me a bike. So my wife got me a bike, um, like a mountain bike, and my mate challenged me to ride to the gym tonight, which is 13 kilometers away up and down hills, and it's going to suck. And I really don't want to do it, but now I have to. Is it, uh, what are you, what, what are you lifting today? What's the, are you, I hope it's not leg day. Uh, it's cardio. It's cardio. Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> no, leg day was yesterday. 13, 13 kilometers on the bike isn't too bad. Yeah. It depends how much you've biked. None. Uh, I, you've yeah. seen, you guys can look at my level of fitness. And if I say 13 kilometers on a bike isn't too bad, I'm going to tell you it's not that bad. I don't think it's going to be that bad. It's just, I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know like how my energy level is going to be once I actually get there. Yeah. And for those, those Americans listening, you can look up what that is in miles yourself. <laughs> uh, no, no, you don't convert for you. They have to do it free. Okay. They have to do the freedom conversion themselves. All right. All right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all I've been doing is just working on this video. I, I have, this is the most I have ever edited a video and like, it's mainly because I'm learning how to use a program still, but then I'm also color grading and everything as well, which I don't normally do. Yeah, um, that could, I, then, I bet that would be a little overwhelming, like throwing so many new things into one video. It is. Yeah, I kind of like, I had this idea of all these things I wanted to do. And then I sort of stepped back and thought, all right, I don't need to put in a hundred transitions like, and learn all them right now. I can learn them over time instead of trying to put it all in one video and learn it. Like just try and get the basics out. Yeah. I think it's a, a better way of doing it because. Yeah. So, like with new equipment, it's all about learning the equipment first. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. That All doesn't right. segue well, nicely so- into anything. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about this week, Adam? Well, it kind of it kind of does. So this this week we're talking about origin stories, as in like what got us into making from a young age to where we are now. What gave us the passion and the interest into doing what we do, even just building in general. So I suppose it kind of does segue because I'm learning a new thing. Oh, okay. Oh, there's the there's the segue we all missed. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, who wants to go first? What um what sort of gave you your first passion? Grant's okay, well, pointing you're... up, but for me that's the top of my screen. So I guess I'll I'll talk. It's, but <laughs> <laughs> well, we should go with the people who could remember it the most because they're the youngest. And therefore, it's not that far away from their origin <laughs> it story. Like it's, it's, right. It's still yeah, happening, it was, really. I was 10 years old, like, last year. I can tell. Yeah. I was I 10 know. years old, like, 30 years ago. Come on, guys. <laughs> I mean, I feel like in some ways I had, like, the quintessential American childhood um, that, like, people like to romanticize. Like, there was a lot of building forts playing with Legos, like a healthy amount of like hijinks and um, making fireworks out of like little cap guns and stuff um, and hacking stuff together. Yeah. And now that you say these things, they bring back so many memories. (laughs) I have forgotten my childhood apparently, even though I remember so much, but yeah. Yeah. Building forts was a huge one for me. So like I grew up um, like kind of, around a lot of woods, a lot of wooded areas. And um, my cousins who we spent a lot of time with had a lot of acreage. So when we would go over to their house, we would go, we could just like go into the woods and get down branches and spend all day building forts with like hay bales and scrap metal. Oh, you mean an actual fort? Yeah. I thought you meant like a bed fort. No, no, no. Like, like forts in the woods. Um, What? And it was funny because we would spend like hours building these forts and then we'd finish and then it's like, well, then what do you do with it? Like <laughs> we just kind of like <laughs> we'd hang out in it for a little bit and then be like, okay, now we want to like go fishing or do something else. Um, and then until high school where those building forts came a place to like hang out with friends um, and you wouldn't have to be in your house. And then, and at that point it wasn't as much hay bales as it was like we'd bring like a couch 
and like build a little <laughs> roof in the woods. Um, I definitely but saw those. That was those. a big part of it for me. Yeah, I, saw, I definitely saw those growing up. But I was, I always wanted to build those forts, and I saw them. Like I'd walk by them, going like, "One day I want to build that." I never, I never did that. I don't know. That's crazy. So one of my fondest memories from high school actually was I was hanging out with my friend and we were working on this fort, this like high school fort we were building in the woods near his house. And it was like, it was basically like a lot of people's yards backed up onto these woods and they would just throw scrap into the very back ends of their yards. So he would like, we'd like ask the neighbors if we could take like these old bits of roofing and two by fours with nails sticking out of them and use it. Um, And I stepped on a nail because oh. there was all like rusty nails and everything sticking out of it. And the next day I was planning on hiking the tallest mountain in New England, Mount Washington, uh, with a bunch of my friends, which I did. Um, and it was an amazing day. But when I got into the car, when I got out of the car afterwards, I like almost fell over. Uh, because of how painful (laughs) my foot was wow um yeah but i would say like as a kid i didn't build a lot of very nice things i built a lot of very janky things and i I don't know if you guys had it yeah Yeah, exactly like i didn't love janky things i didn't love shop class as a kid um I don't know if it was a little too like them telling you what to make and it felt a little too much like school. Like I, I liked school. Don't get me wrong, but um, it wasn't shop class was not my favorite class by any means. Yeah. Like uh, shop so class I took was very shop. Oh, interesting. Hmm. I didn't get that. What did you say, Adam? Our shop class was really freeing. Like, well, of course, we had certain things. Like, they taught you how to build a toolbox and all that sort of stuff. But there were a lot of the time, it was like build sort of what you want, and we'll guide you through it. Hmm. Um, yeah. And like everyone made it at their own way. Ours yeah, was guess- super structured. It was yeah. like here, build. You have to build a chair. And that's it. And everyone gets to build a chair. P.S. You're partnered with someone who's not going to do a single thing the whole time. Great. Oh, we didn't have partners. Yeah. You do it all yourself. I think if I did it in high school, it would have been um, more freeing, like you said. But the, I think the one wood shop class I took was in middle school. And it was only like a few simple projects that were fun-ish. But I was like, okay, like I want to do my own stuff. So what, I definitely what grades is school? Oh, just, so I guess – so the sh- wood shop class I took, I was probably like 12, 13 years old. And then high school – so that's middle school is – sorry, let me go from the beginning. So elementary school is age 6 to age 11. Middle school is age 11 to age 14. And then high school is age 14 to age 18. Yeah, right. Okay. That's uh, – so we don't have middle school – well, most no, places don't have middle school here uh, that I know of. There are some places that have middle school where grade like seven and eight go to a different school. But most of the places here, it's uh, you go from like one to eight and then uh, nine to 12 or like me, nine to 13. But 13 has gone now. Mm-hmm. I was the last uh, 13. As a K through six, K is like kindergarten. And then mm-hmm, one yeah. through six, and then seven to twelve. Right. So shop class is only in high school for us, which is seven through twelve. Right. Mm. So we have a, a couple of schools around here that are seven to twelve as well. But yeah, it's some some of them are one to eight, some of them are seven to twelve. Like it's a it's a mix mash yeah. of depending on the age of kids. Uh, mm. And we had a shop class in both. Uh, my elementary and high school. It was kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. So we did as well. It was just an elective in high school and I didn't take it then. Yeah. Although I did do wood shop and summer camp, which I loved way more than in school because I think the connotation was, it was more for fun. And I felt like I yeah. could do more of the projects that I wanted to do. I remember I got like, I think it was one of the projects I first got really, really excited about, which was just making like a wooden ping pong paddle. Cause me and my friends were like, so into playing ping pong at camp. So it felt like the really cool thing to do. So you've just like 
you guys have just opened up. So like, so I've been trying to think about like, what was my origin story this whole week as we were talking about, you know, picking out what we're going to think about. And I couldn't come up with anything. And every time mm-hmm. you, you're saying something, this popping a new memory into my head of what my origin story was of like things I did in like in grade six, I, uh, we had a teacher named Mr. Brady at my school and in his class and no other class in the entire uh, thing, he was big into woodworking in his class. There were workbenches set up. So grade six workbenches set up wood saws, everything. It was awesome. Uh, I made a pencil crossbow. Nice. Right. It was great shooting Eagle uh, seagulls, but I, you know, <laughs> did, I didn't really shoot them because I'm a nice person. You know, boy, but uh, he got cancer and uh, and he was off school. So about like three months into the like school year, he left. Um, And then there was like supply teachers for the the remainder of the year. And it I just remember that as like a big hit to me because the supply teachers didn't let us touch these tools. And we're sitting there looking at these workbenches that are set up with like little miter stand boxes and stuff. Like there's no power tools. It was all hand tools. And we weren't allowed to touch any of these tools in this class. And I just, like, I think that kind of like the fact that that happened kind of turned me off from woodworking for a while. Like I didn't really get back into it for a long time. And Mm. I think like that creator mindset kind of got hindered with that. Maybe that's why I blocked it out, you know, but, uh, yeah, I don't know what what I can't remember what you said, but like summer camp or something, and exploded memories in my mind. Yeah, it makes you think about how important good teachers are, because mm. that would have just made a totally different experience if that teacher had stuck around or had not gotten cancer. Yeah, like obviously I don't like at the time in grade six, I resented the fact that you know, this person had cancer and was leaving us, but now I get like, he, you know, yeah, it was probably really hard for him too. <laughs> oh, for sure. I'm, uh, <laughs> I know you are a person with functioning emotions. <laughs> right, right. When I was in grade six, I, when I was 12 year olds, I don't, I don't think I was. So like, yeah. So sorry to interject your, your origin story <laughs> with bits of mine, but I, I feel like it's a really kind of interesting to talk about them at the same time in yeah. like, yeah, as you talk about what, what your different ages were and what, what you were doing at the time. So how about you, Adam? What were you in grade six? Grade six. Um, well, grade six wasn't really much for me. I say seven was, would have been when I first did my first shop class. But before, before that, like growing up, um, what would grade six would be 11 to 12 years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would have, I, I remember pulling VCRs apart and, and all that sort of stuff and pulling things apart with no intention of putting them back together. I used to pull hot wheels apart and um, clean them up, paint them and put them back together. Oh, I went yeah. through a phase. I yeah. I went through a phase from like 12 years old to 14 years old where I painted everything. If I could pull it apart <laughs> and paint it, I did it. That's I cool. even still uh, have in my shop downstairs like 50 cans of spray paint in all different colors. Yeah. Did you I ever get into off. like like graffiti or tagging or anything like that? No. No, not really my cup of tea. <laughs> Just curious. You, you, yeah. Do you, you don't live in a urban center though, do you? Are you oh, I do graffiti all the time. Oh, you do? Yeah. But you don't live in an urban – you didn't grow up in an urban center, did you? Um, Not really. I mean, like, graffiti is all around here, but I didn't grow up in that sort of crowd. Hmm. But it's not um, – I'm not, like, in the hood or anything, no. You're not a gangster? No. Hashtag foreshadowing. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um – that 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 re- that reminds me of another thing that I did when I was in that age range is uh I used to make models like uh car models and like that painting yeah. like that's basically all you do with them is you paint them and assemble them uh but it's uh always an interesting 
kind of thing to to think so, about and so on that like i've talked about it before in this podcast like my grandpa being a big influence and one mm-hmm. year for like the holidays he got me a model set probably seeing that i liked like making stuff and trying to garner that and i i was putting it together with him at his house um and then i took it home to continue making it and completely lost interest and i think i realized that i do not have the personality type for models like at all like i just wasn't satisfied by it at the time i think i was too impatient I think I realize. I think also with that first one, I realized that you're supposed to paint them before you put them together. And so I finished this first model and was like, "Oh, now it's like impossible to paint precisely." Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, eh, "I don't want to do this anymore." So it's interesting. I like kind of lost. I, I think maybe if I had been introduced to it in a different way, I would have been more interested. In it. But at the time, I was like, "I was like, yeah, this isn't what I want to be doing." It's so interesting that you say you don't have the patience because when I see you do your leather work. Mm-hmm. I see someone with so much patience and so yeah, much intricate exactly. detail. I mean, we have patience for different things in our lives, right? right? Um, it's, I'm sure if you, it was like, if you were into cars or something like today, like yeah. that was like your thing, then you might be more into models. That's a good point. Like I was never a kid that was super into like planes or cars or anything. Like they were cool, but I wasn't like oh, that specific car, or that B12 bomber, like I want to make perfectly. Mm-hmm. Um, like the payoff wasn't there for me. My my computer from year 10, oh, sorry, not year, from 10 years old till like 18 had a picture of Eleanor on it <laughs> on the background. That was my background. Um, ever since like Gone in 60 Seconds came out, that was like my dream car. But I was I was less of a model in Australia. We do now. Um, not really like you know when you see like in a movie and like in a, like an American movie and it's just like what they just throw at a college kid like it's just some cheap bomb Mustang. Man, that car over here that that college kid gets would be worth thirty grand. Yeah, they're so damn expensive. Um, but the new ones, I when they first came out, I was like, "Oh, they look pretty cool." But now every man and his dog has one. That they're just they're they're crap because everyone's got one. What's the point? Um, mm. But yeah, I was I was less of a model building person, although I did build models and more of like Meccano, Meccano oh, yeah. and Lego. Yeah. yeah. I so- always thought Meccano was like really cool, and like that's like Erector sets as well, right? Those are similar. Yeah. I don't know what a rectus set is. Yes. I think yeah, they're, they're about they're the same thing. Um, yeah. I think I always wanted one, but for whatever reason, I didn't ask for it. I didn't get it. But I, I also love Legos. So, so we just build you- – I would make yeah. everything into a car, basically like a triple-decker bus that was like an office and like a hideout and like a secret agent situation room sort of thing. So it had to be on were wheels. You, were you guys – like did you get the Lego set and then build something? Or did you get a bunch of Lego and then – like did you get the Lego set and build the thing on the box? Or did you have a bunch of Lego and you built whatever? I, As I mentioned earlier in the um, – when we were texting, I grew up with the uh, privilege of being the fourth child. So there was already a big bin of mismatched Legos that I could play around with. And that was – I think that was the association I had with Legos from a young age was not building the sets, but playing around with a bin of Legos. Although I did get a couple sets in my childhood, but it was never as fun. See, for me, so, it's interesting that uh, for me, I, uh, I would build the sets and then you weren't allowed to touch them. They were finished projects <laughs> and that was it. You could not touch them. They were done. Don't touch them. If you just gave me a bunch of Lego, I would build like a house or a car or something. And then it would just be like, I'm bored of this. But I would play with my Lego sets for hours on end. Mm-hmm. It was, yeah. But like you could not, you couldn't take them apart. Like I wanted to glue them together. That's how bad I didn't want them to move. I still have some of them, like a pirate ship and stuff. But oh wow! So growing up as a child, I never got a set of Lego. I just got a, like a box of Lego, um, which I thought was cool. But then now as an adult. I prefer sets. I'm like, great. I will, I'll put a set together and I don't want to pull it apart. And my son, it drives my son insane because he gets a set. We build it 
and then I don't let him take it apart. And all he wants to do is take it apart. And I'm like, don't take it apart because I don't want to put it back together. Just once it's together, it's together. Just leave it together. I'm more of a your son speed. Right. Yeah. So I, with what my son does today, I am really trying to push him into the build whatever you can with what's there. And like, I try and help him with that because I don't want him to have the same problem as me of like, you see a bunch of parts and they can only go together one way. Right. Yeah. Like, I don't think like I have that problem, but I often Mm. find myself like look searching for the best or only way that all of these parts can go together. I will never make a triple decker couch for those that have seen the Lego movie. It's double decker. I think. Oh, double decker, whatever. (laughs) Yeah. But when well, we you watch have, the movie, um, his feet's in your face. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have a box of just normal, like just box of Lego, and then we have Lego sets as well. Um, and some of the Lego set, like if the Lego set gets pulled apart, I just end up just pulling the whole thing apart, chucking it all in together, and then he can do whatever he wants. Because I'm not putting it back together. <laughs> but there's so many sets these days as well. Like I would, I would absolutely love to get like a. Um, Millennium Falcon or something. Those are insane, yeah. Like, but I'm not going to go spend two and a half grand on one Lego set. Is that how much a Millennium Falcon is? The something big one, like yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. So it's a maybe just- if I get that YouTube buddy. Yeah. Going back to um, um, like level of commitments to projects. Like as a kid, I had this and, and using like the right things versus like whatever. I had this funny thing as a kid where I was always building things out of random stuff, like never the right materials. It was all, it was a lot of like glue sticks, a lot of like hot gluing pencils together. (laughs) And I think my parents recognized from an early age that like, I really like making stuff, but I don't know why, but like, I never asked my parents for like the right materials. Like I would ask for like the, like the classic things you'd ask for birthdays, like toys and games or whatever else. But I was never like, I never like really tried to get like the right everything together to do a project. I remember I really wanted to build like a boat. I wanted to build a skiff that I could paddle around the pond near our house. (laughs) And I was like, I remember spending all this time like trying to forage wood from around our yard. And I was using like all these like half rotten pressure treated boards. And I was basically doomed from the beginning. Like there was no way it just, there was such a, I was building such a high barrier of entry to myself that there was no way I was ever going to finish it. And I, I was thinking back, I'm like, Oh, I wish at the time I just like, asked my dad i was like dad can you like help me can we go to the hardware store and get this wood but as a kid i think not having the commitment to do that project and like wanting to hang out with my friends and play sports and everything else like i never i wasn't able to really zero in on it in the way that i would want to now and i think back and kind of like beat myself up for that which is silly but it's it's funny the way kids are in that way right it's a same like I, i look back and like I was just going to say, that's so cool though. Like for a kid to think, I want to build a raft. Like I want to build this like raft or like, you know, this thing out of wood and stuff. Like it's such a cool thought. I I don't think I ever thought when I was a kid, like that I would want to build something out of wood. Um, Probably it wasn't until like my teenage years that I got more into woodworking. Hmm. Well, when I was a kid, my dad and I built a couple of toys out of wood. I still have them. Um, I'll put some pictures in the Patreon. But uh, they're like a little toy train, a little toy airplane. Um, and But I, I never really, beyond that, we never really did anything with wood because I kind of like felt like, well, if I build a plastic model, it's going to look exactly like the car I want. If I build a wood version, it's going to look sort of like the car I want, right? Mm -hmm. But now I completely get, like, it's more interesting to have a a thought, like an inspiration point, Mm -hmm. than to have the thing that someone else designed and made, right? Like, the little truck that I made for my son, uh, it looks like a truck, and that's it. Like it doesn't look like a Ford F-150 from 1994. Yeah. It looks like a truck. You look at it, you go, that's a truck. And that's what I, what I love about it is that it leaves the imagination open Yeah. to what is it. Definitely. 
And I think like to, to go back to where I was, uh, I wanted to go is uh, I remember taking things apart as a kid and wanting to make bigger, more interesting things out of those materials and being doomed and never being able to actually create anything I ever wanted to make. Hmm. Like you said, like you wanted to build the skiff. You wanted to like go around. You, you had the rotten uh, pressure treated boards. I, I would take like electronics apart and go, I can build a robot, but I couldn't build a robot. There was no robots in there. Maybe there yeah. was, but I didn't know how to turn that circuit board into anything other than a <laughs> mangled piece of nothing. Right. Yeah. And like, as a kid, you have, it's not like that experience wasn't fun for me. Like I had fun imagining if I could take the boat out and, and the bits of planning that I did do, it wasn't like I have the same project motivation that I have now and, and the same payoffs. But I think in some ways, um, I romanticize or it's a little bit of like the grass is always greener things. The, the kind of like father son relationship where it's like you you, you spend four years taking apart an engine together and putting it back together. And then like you have this beautiful finished thing at the end. Cause I like, I mean, I had a wonderful childhood, but I didn't have that experience. Um, right. Well, like you're one of four kids, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm one of three, like you're never going to have the, like the TV dad father son relationship only exists on TV <laughs> because they've they've manufactured it right. Yeah. No, and it's I almost feel bad saying that because like I don't want to throw any shade at my dad. Like I love my dad. I think he raised me as good as he could have. Um, it's just I didn't have that experience. That wasn't my experience. Right. But like he had to split his attention between you and three other kids. There's yeah. no way he could ever have given you that four years, mm-hmm. right? Other than I was reading a thing about these these people that canoed from Manitoba all the way down to Colombia or something, I can't, or Venezuela or somewhere down in South America. So they literally took a canoe from from Manitoba in Canada and canoed all the way down to South America, and it was a father son thing that took over a year. Right. Like, yeah. and it was yeah, a right. father, two sons at one point, one of the sons actually just said, I'm out. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go and do with like, I'm going to go return to my real life because I spent enough time with this, you know, thing. And, and I'm sure he probably felt the whole time, like as he's leaving, he probably felt like I was letting down my dad. Uh, but yeah, in reality, like how long can you spend canoeing for, you know, for with no real, you're not sponsored back then. You wouldn't be getting money. You wouldn't be posting it on YouTube and getting those AdSense dollars. Like, you just did it for the fun of it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Sorry. This like nostalgia <laughs> makes me talk a lot. I don't know what it is. How good was like non technology childhoods? Right, like technology to me growing up. Play was a uh, pong we had pong <laughs> mm. see but i so i had a lot more modern technology in my childhood than you guys did but i still feel like i had a great analog childhood as well i mean totally, i remember you when you say stuff that you're talking about it's like you, you had the same things i had yeah like i i don't but think a lot has really said, changed like, go on well, as you said to us as you said to us anyway you have three older brothers so you got their hand-me-down sort of thing so you know, you you would have grown up with all that. Whereas someone that was born the same year as you and you and they're the only sibling would have been brought up completely different on everything, advanced and and all that sort of stuff. So that probably yeah, helps a lot. It, it, that is part of it, but I mean, a lot. I had friends that were eldest or only childs, only children, and I think kids, even with technology, kids love going outside and taking stuff apart and building forts in the woods, no matter like how yeah. fun iPads are. Um, you know, I, I think some stuff just like stays the same. If you have access to mm. it. I think that's a big thing. You had access to the wooded area. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Right. And if you I didn't mean, have any access to it, you'd, you'd be like, well, the iPad, I'll just go make it on Minecraft. Yeah, and I'm not joking where I say like, I feel like I had like the quintessential childhood. I mean, like, 
I could we could be playing on our street in the summer all day and like two cars would go by. It was it was yeah. perfect. Nice. And I'm so grateful for that. I, I feel like it's it set me up to for success. Anyways. Yeah. I didn't I don't even think I'd let my kids play outside by themselves anymore. Yeah. Out the front anyway. But like just with all the traffic. You know, with the whole No, just like the whole like today's day and age is such a scary place to have your kids outside alone. I think that's a whole conversation for a whole nother episode because it more has to do with how much you hear about it and less about how often it happens. Yeah. Um, But like with the whole iPad thing, like my son could be sitting downstairs watching his iPad. If I walk up to him and say, Hey, let's go jump on the trampoline. He will throw that iPad and run to the trampoline. Yeah. So there is still that wanting to get outside and away from technology, which I think is amazing. Um, that's, and we've that's really gotten away from the main topic. But <laughs> well, um, let's let's you know get pull it back in. I like it. Um. So when when did you guys sort of like realize that you were really into the whole woodworking? Well, Grant and Morley getting into like the the actual making and not just tinkering. I suppose we still tinker, but if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like more like with and end products in mind that had nothing to do with the starting products that actually accomplished the goals and not ones that you just kind of fooled around with. Is that what you mean? Yeah. 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 Like you, you had an idea of like, I want to build this. That's a good and question. I'm going to have to it. think about it for a second. <laughs> well, for me, it was definitely, it would have been year eight to year nine at school. Um, in shop class, I was definitely like, again, having that little bit of freedom where we could build what we wanted. As soon as I got into year 10 and I then was allowed to have selective so I could pick my classes. So years 10, 11, and 12, my classes were literally industrial technology, woodworking, industrial technology, metalworking, woodworking as a um, class itself, engineering studies, construction studies, Mass and English. <laughs> so that other than making, wow. I only had two classes that were not making. And the mass, I did advanced mass. And English, I never went to. I just went to woodworking because the teacher knew how much I had passion for woodworking and would just sign me off as being in class and let me go work on my woodworking. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So you really hit your stride in high school then. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely where I got my passion for woodworking because I um, come the next year, I dropped metalworking and I dropped in um, engineering studies and then just was like all woodworking construction. Well, for me, I definitely had in high school, I had a lot of ideas. I came up with a lot of ideas that are now like I – remember talking about regenerative braking for electric cars in grade nine, which Mm. in grade nine, that was the year 98. Like electric cars didn't have regenerative braking at the time, but I was really big into Mm. remote control cars. And I saw the amount of power being wasted when you were braking. And I went, why don't we feed that back into the batteries? Because at the time you had NICADs and getting through a five minute race was sometimes difficult. And I went, you know, I thought that up on my own later, you know, every electric car out there has regenerative braking. So, like, I, I had a lot of ideas, but I had no clue how to turn those ideas into reality. Um, in in reality, like, when I look at it, there was a lot of, like, construction stuff I did. There was a lot of, like, working on cars I did. But I didn't really think about, like, making until I really started my YouTube channel. So in reality, it's like my my making for reels uh, started a year and a half ago, two years ago. Actually, for all the viewers at home, you can see my first woodworking project behind me. It's a, a sled I made for my son. Uh, it was based off plans, but I just went and bought a bunch of wood and made this sled and boom, now I'm a maker. I don't know. But uh, so now that I've 
I think I, now that I've gained some skills and like, you know, I find like following plans helps me to, to figure out my skills and then I can take those skills and use them with my ideas. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I find like, I need to do a couple projects that have a very like structured way of, of figuring something out. And then it's like, Oh, okay. Now I know how to do X, Y, or Z. I can use that on my next project. That's based out of something out of my head. So that was about a year and a half ago. Otherwise it was do whatever my dad said, put the (laughs) tile here, you know, like frame this wall. Okay. You know, cut the two by fours, this length done. I can cut like chop, (laughs) chop, chop. Like it wasn't any, like there wasn't much like making as much as it was following orders, which, you know, uh, that definitely would have had part in what you do now. Right. Of course. And it's the same with like the race car stuff. We did a lot of interesting stuff to make the race car faster, but a lot of it had to do with someone else has already done it, but you have to recreate what someone else has done. Like, you know, if you're installing brand new pistons, you got to gap the piston rings. It's not an easy process until you've done it once. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Like that kind of stuff. I look at it and go, all these skills I learned, but I wasn't making things. I was assembling things. Right. I mean, it's, it's not trivial. Like there, it has its unique challenges. They're just different challenges. Right. I, I, yeah, I'm not trying to like make my, I'm just like, when you, when you talk about like making, I go, I assemble a lot of things. If you, I, if you gave me something, I could take it apart, put it back together. No problem. Right. right. I, Cause I have a good memory, but I don't have a good, like, I often have great ideas that I don't know how to turn into reality. Mm-hmm. I need to like get Justin White. I need I his. That. Yeah, I need to get on his podcast so that he can help me understand how to make ideas reality. Yeah. So, it, uh, in response to Adam's question, is like I've talked about in this podcast before, like going to university and like studying engineering for me, and then at the same time getting into like watching maker videos was like this perfect storm because I realized that like I could make projects manifest, make ideas reality, as we just said. (laughs) And I had, I could, if I just got some tools, like I, I could do it and it was very empowering. Um, but I'm thinking back now, like to more of like the high school days, I think that's when I like really got into the more making for a finished project than tinkering. And it's funny, it all comes back to forts for me. So that fort I mentioned, we were built, I was building my friends in high school to go like hang out in the woods away from our parents. Um, I remember I wanted to build like an Adirondack chair for it out of like scrap wood. It wasn't really an Adirondack chair. It was just kind of like, um, like a cross brace style chair. I don't know what really what those are called. Um, super, super janky. It could not have been more janky. But I spent all day in our basement making that and i think that was like one of the first times in my like quasi adult life where like i really got into a flow state making where it was just like forgot about eating was like this is all i want to do today (laughs) um and i was like wow that was kind of crazy like i just i just want to make this chair all day i I don't care about anything else um so that was like very interesting. I still do that. Yeah, no, and I do it all the time now, but I think that was like seeing through the doors a little bit for the first time. I was like, this yeah. is interesting. Yeah. And then around – actually, I think it was the same year of high school. I was kind of seeing a girl, um, and this is around of time where we had a ton of snow. So we had like a week straight of snow days. It was just a blizzard. And – um I was starting to get a lot of cabin fever. So I was like, oh, I just need to go outside and do something because I've been inside so much. And I got in my head that I wanted to build an igloo. So I I go outside, find a cooler, and start making snow blocks to build an igloo. And it's the same thing with the Adirondack chair. I just spend hours um, working on this. And it's like all I want to do. And so this girl that I'm seeing calls me and she's like, hey, like, do you want to come hang out at my house with like me and some friends? I'm like, no, sorry. I just really need to finish this igloo. (laughs) 
And her friends got so mad at me. <laughs> They're like, are you serious? Like, you're going to blow us off for building your stupid igloo. I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. That's all I want to do today. Um, so I think those two experiences, and this was around the time when I started considering engineering as well, were very, very formative for me when I realized I was like having an idea in my head and manifesting that is like an amazing feeling. And I want to do more of this. So I, I really wish that, so I went to school for engineering as well. And the only time that I really felt like I've like that worked out for me was when they had the projects of like reversed engineer this Did, pick something, draw it up in auto, AutoCAD, right? It's like reverse engineer projects. Like that was when I felt like, Oh, I can do it because there's an end. Like I, I didn't have to figure out how to get there as much as I knew it existed. So it wasn't like in my mind, I didn't go. I didn't think like, uh, how do I get there from there? Someone has already done it before, so I should be able to as well. And I think as I've gotten older, I finally realized I have the skills to turn my ideas into something. And it's only, it's taken me until I'm in my thirties to, to actually do something that you, you know, figured out when you're 16. So, or <laughs> whatever you were just saying, like, that's, uh, that's really cool. So, yeah, I wish you know, I had that back then. But you know what? Life is long, and uh, you have many good years left to make your ideas reality. <laughs> well, you know what? We should maybe think about you know making some clamp mendations with the amount of times that we've mentioned the Make Ideas Reality podcast. Yes, <laughs> we should. But before that, we should thank formally everyone who's supporting us on patreon um no oh, mix again, it up big shout out to uh leroy big Roth, Tim timworks in addition to the other great people that support us there guys we will be in contact ooh, with you soon to get you one of these sweet keychains yes and um, stickers might be coming along as well yeah we'll try to coordinate so everything comes together yeah we're just waiting on a like sticker mule deal or something just yeah. so everyone, everyone knows why they haven't received their favorite type of clamp as a, uh, in the mail. <laughs> as Grant meant, it, as Grant mentioned in the, the bike justice episode, uh, when I should have waited for a 75% off sale at Canadian Tire before emergency buying some bolt cutters. It's the same thing with Sticker Mule. It's like, how are you going to buy it full price if they're doing a 70% off sale every other week on what you want? Hmm. So, Morley, what's your clamp mandation then? Keep talking. All right. My clamp mandation, uh, it's a quick one. Uh, Fleet Foxes is a fantastic band. Um, they came out with a new album on our date of recording, uh, September 22nd, and it's really good. I listened to it twice before we hit record. If you haven't listened to Fleet Foxes, they <laughs> make beautiful <laughs> music, um, kind of in the indie style, very melodic, a lot of really good harmonies. Um, yeah, it's really You have the most here. random band shout outs I've ever heard. <laughs> Fleet Foxes isn't random. They're... They are relatively well known. Um, so the album is called Shore, S H O R E, and I would recommend it. What about you, Grant? Well, I'm going to give a shout out to Austin at High Caliber Customs. He made his son's, uh, or one, I guess only one son because there's only one belt. He made his son a buffalo nickel belt buckle that's uh, kind of shaped like a bit of a like a six shot six shooter um and it's got some real uh high caliber bullets in there or i don't know i don't know shells i don't know how, i don't know the lingo i'm in canada we don't <laughs> have the same gun laws as the states so i don't know what the real lingo is but there's like it looks like it's like a old timey six shooter and it's got some stuff in it um but i really liked uh just the way he 
he went about making it. And I thought it was really cool that he made it for his son. And I really want a Buffalo nickel. And I hope that by giving him a shout out, he will send me one because I uh, used to collect coins <laughs> and I still have my entire coin collection, but I don't have a Buffalo nickel. So, you know, just I'll say it one more time. You know, I'd like a Buffalo nickel. <laughs> I saw that. It looks you, really cool. Yeah. And and you have, you have my address, Austin, you know, so just send it over. <clears throat> Well, my recommendation this week is Bourbon Moth Woodworking. And I mainly picked him at first, although he does make great videos, for his thumbnails. Have you seen his thumbnails? They're so funny. So he will take himself, I don't know if he uses a green screen or what, but he takes a picture of himself, cuts himself out, and then makes himself like he made a desk, pulled out the drawer, and then he's sitting on the edge of the drawer. Like, just... Great thumbnails, but um, his videos, I don't know if he does it on purpose, but he's very monotone. So like he'll speak the entire like video and not, not have any expression in his voice. And it's very confusing because I don't know if he's doing it on purpose to like do a bit or if he does it because he just doesn't show emotion. <laughs> and yeah, so, but yeah, great videos, amazing thumbnails, and I wish I could steal them. <laughs> I can do that for myself, but yeah, he's but, yeah. he's got some funny stuff going on. He's a pretty good guy. Yeah, yeah he is. Yeah. Well, right. we do have some reviews this week. I almost, I literally yeah. almost forgot. <laughs> yeah. And stepping back to what we we're saying about gangsters before, our first one comes from a guy by the name of M Snoop, and he sent it to me through Instagram. And he wants this read as a gangster. So we've been pretty good. Yeah, we're not explicit this episode. So I say just say all the swear words and I'll beep him out. All right, you got it. Can you move your curse? Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> all right. Here it goes. <laughs> this podcast be sweet, yo. Dim guys are great to listen to. They always have great conversations and tell the shit about how f- the shit could be. I can listen to them all day, whether they be talking about making a living. I heard the young Doug likes cats, and there ain't nothing but to do the coolest pussy I've heard. The old one, dude, all right. Loves his motherfucking beers. And Aussie. The Aussie sounds funny as hell. And there is nothing... Ah, oh, this is hard to read. There... He wrote all out all these apostrophes and everything else. <laughs> and there's ain't nothing but in all that shit. It's a great show, and you should definitely go get that shit to listen. Yes, that definitely every one of those apostrophes and every like, it was spelt the way he said it. We're going to yeah. put a copy of that in the sh- in the um, Patreon as well, just so you can see <laughs> what he means. Idea. But I think because I think you tried I- to do the Jamaican thing, you screwed yourself up because you're trying to do the accent but also iterate the words. I think <laughs> I did a great job. I think you did a great job too. <laughs> right until you like nizzer ain't nothing. No, yeah, the, I don't know the what. N visitor, there's was a little tricky. Yeah, there's a lot of like apost- N apostrophes and some some Zs where Zs don't belong. You did a great yeah. job. Thank you, thank you. You did do a great Thanks, job. I'm Snoop. There was the uh, the Jamaican rude boy for you. <laughs> What's the next one? We got Dave Bauer. Oh, next one is yeah. So Dave Bauer, the review says United States of America. So I don't know. Pick a state. Yeah. Pick a place. Hmm. I wish I knew where Dave was from. I want to say he's New York, but I don't know for sure. I think he's somewhere in New York. So just go with the spot. Just go with Brooklyn. Like go crazy in New York. The thing is none of the words in this review would have a very – yeah, like if you I said agree. You gotta change what? <laughs> just, just go for it. Dave gives us five stars, and he says only one guy with a beard. Um, Adam has a beard. What? Currently, that's yeah. the that's only one guy with a beard. Is the name of the review? The review is yeah. underneath the five stars. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Dave also says, uh, <laughs> check out three great, fun, creative people making awesome stuff. 
Thank you, Dave, <laughs> for the nice words. <laughs> and, uh, and and it will be soon. Only got one guy with a beard because I'm shaving uh, the beard yeah. off at the end of the month. So Ooh, I hit the donations. Sunday. I hit my goal. So there's going to be actually a live stream. I forgot to mention at that at the top. And uh, yeah. So thank you to everyone who's donated. I'm blown away by the support. Yeah, that's awesome. that next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Somewhere around there. I'll be announcing the live pod, the live thing sometime in the future. Exciting. Cool. All right. And we got one more review from RR, sorry, RLL Woodworks. He is from Nashville, but grew up in Chicago and says, good luck, Morley. All right. I'm, I'm just going full Chicago on this one. I practiced this one a few times. So uh, RL Woodwork says, So glad to have found these guys. I started listening after the Enlighten Us Challenge and have really enjoyed the past few episodes. You can tell Grant, Morley, and Adam are passionate makers and they do a great job of making you feel like you're part of the convo. Keep it up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> There's your Chicago I accent. I love it. The Bears. The Bears. The Bears. At, at, at first, you started sounding really Canadian. Well, I mean, it is, normal. it is almost a little Canadian, right? Because it's Midwest. A lot of Midwestern yeah. Canadian accents are, or Ontario accent are similar. Hmm. Isn't Chicago like pretty north? Like it's more north than most parts of, like the most of the population of Canada. Pretty sure. Uh, well, it's, this, it's on Lake Michigan. Yeah. So I don't think it's it's south of Detroit, I'm pretty sure. But it's up there. Yeah. Hmm. Anyways, they definitely have a, a very northerly I think they're more north than me. Which is like how I usually like to, to point it out. Hmm. Anyways. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> moving um, on. so we also also want to thank you, TF Turning, for the theme song which is what you hear at the beginning and end. Great music. Um, and every time I'm listening to a podcast in the car and it finishes and ours plays, every time I think, I know that song. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Any other business before we move on to the outro? No, sir. No. All right. Where can well, everyone find you, Morley? You can find me at Morley Kurt, just about everywhere. And Grant? Well, I'm going to suggest you guys go to thegrantalexander.com because I just got my Squarespace uh, bill, and it Ooh. is without discount this year because the discount ran out. And uh, it costs a lot of money, so I hope someone will at least go there once or twice. Got to get your money's worth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you can find me at makeamackie.com, and you can find us collectively at Clampcast everywhere right yeah yay yeah. word uh mainly instagram and yeah so oh and also too with the reviews um if you leave us a review don't forget to tell us where you are from or if you don't want to say that tell us um a what you want molly to impersonate a character or a place or a gangster maybe someone could write in and do a 50s gangster because that's what he wanted to do <laughs> no, you know, so I want to do like a Peaky Blinders style gangster. Yeah, oh, you yeah, could have done that. Try it again, because uh, it's because no. it's gangster with an A, not an E R. <laughs> well, I don't know where the like. I don't know how they spell it in England. Anyways, anyways, um, <laughs> and if you yeah, if you don't, if you can't leave a review, just send, do what M Snoop did and send us a um, send me a message through Instagram or contact one of us on. Um, Twitter or Facebook or something. Yeah. Also, yeah. I just remembered I do right. so many other business, but I'll tell you about it in the Ooh. after show. Okay. Ooh. Bye. See you. Bye. Did you know, did you see what was put on the canoe checklist? Adam we in a to, bag. Yeah. We have to bring Adam in a bag. <laughs>